All right, I got a comment here from Moses. Now, I don't believe this is the actual Moses from the Bible. I don't believe it is at all. But nevertheless, in the sh he says, in this comment, he says, In this short film, by God, in a nutshell, we examine the possible meanings and symbolism of the New Year's, New Year's 2023 South Korean drone show. During the drone's performance, they make the hologram shapes of a cube, a man's head with AI written inside it, then a man running. Moreover, the hologram technology is quickly becoming as seemingly real as real life, and drone shows across the world are becoming a replacement for old-fashioned fireworks. The drones examined in this film are incredible to watch and likely rich with symbolism. All right, and then he provides a link for that video, and that's why this this uh, comment is held for review. So I watch this video, and then I want to point out three things that are errors. Would be the number of man in the book of Genesis on the sixth day God created man. So what the rabbis believe is that okay. What the rabbis believe well, the number ten. So what the rabbis believe. All right. So that's error number one, and let's show that here. Uh, I'll have to do it this way. Hold on a second. All right. If I can find it, right there. Matthew 23 verse 8 but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even Christ and all ye are brethren so knowing that Jesus says do not be called a rabbi then why are you therefore calling other men rabbis for one is your master even Christ and all ye are brethren so to me when somebody says rabbi whether they're calling themselves rabbi or they're talking about somebody else as a rabbi a rabbi is a person that fully rejects the Lord Jesus Christ if they accepted Jesus Christ they wouldn't be calling themselves rabbi no these are people that fully reject the Lord Jesus Christ they're Antichrist so uh, that's an absolute mistake there to to even call other men rabbis. If it is that all right? So let's go to error number two. Talking about giants, it's going to bring you directly to the pages of Genesis six, where you have the fallen angels make entrance, or pages of Genesis six, where you have the fallen angels. All right. So Genesis six, fallen angels. The, there is no mention of fallen angels in Genesis 6. That's that's a problem all by itself. And then, the word fallen is not in Genesis 6. And the word angel is not in Genesis 6. What these people are referring to are sons of God. Alright, and so what they're saying is sons of God are fallen angels. And that's absolutely insane it really is and we go to first John if I can get there first John chapter 3 verse 2 beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is so now we are the sons of God and uh, you know there's all kinds of verses I could point to but I just wanted to go to that one uh, because it very clearly says right now we are the sons of God and so we're not I mean to say the sons of God are fallen angels we're fallen angels so on one hand you're calling people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ 
rabbis, which means master. And then you're also saying that we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are fallen angels. Think about that. Christ rejecting Jews are masters. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are fallen angels. Just think about that. All right, and that look, we go back to Genesis 6. Um, I'm a son of God, and believe me, I'm no angel, right? <laughs> and so let's go to error number three. Shape, here again looking like Tron in the skies. Now, in the book of Revelation, it states that in the end times, men's hearts will fail them for what they see. Okay. The coming states that in the end times, men's hearts will... Now, in the book of Revelation, it states that in the end times, men's hearts will fail them. Uh, that's not... In the book of Revelation, it makes me wonder, do these people even read the Bible when you make a mistake like that? And... And, you know, to be fair, this guy's not the only one making mistakes like this. I, I see this quite often. People attribute revelation to something that's not in revelation. And <laughs> it, it just makes me wonder, you know, I understand making a mis mistake, but, I mean, come on, man. Um, let's go heart fail here. We'll get ten mentions. Yeah. You look, you see right here on the right side, one mention in the New Testament. And it's Luke 21. So you know the Bible, you know Luke, you know uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 are parallel chapters. And the question is asked of Jesus, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And one of the signs... Uh, that we're gonna see when Jesus actually comes in the clouds of heaven so this is not leading up to the return of Jesus Christ this is the return of Jesus Christ in other words this is the end of the world this is when it is actually the end and it says men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So this verse 26 parallels what we read in uh, Matthew 24, verse 29, for example, in 30, 31. So let's go to, real quickly, let's go to 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then, of course, this parallels what we're reading here with the uh, men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken the powers of heaven shall be shaken parallels the powers of the heavens shall be shaken okay so in other words this is when Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven and when this happens uh, first the dead in Christ are are um, lifted up and then those of us which are alive and remain are caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. All right, and then of course our enemies gathered at our feet, fire comes down from heaven and devours them all. All right, so just to understand the context of what this is talking about, now this is again Luke 21, it's not Revelation. Um, I don't know if it would help to do this, maybe a less specific specific uh, keyword search heart all right as we see if we do let's highlight the word heart all right um, I am he which searches the reins and hearts and I will give unto them get give unto every one of you according to your works and of course uh, the judgment if you will um, the judgment of God is are you saved or are you not saved all right so if you're not saved you're gonna get according to that and if you are saved you're gonna get according to that okay all right 
that seems to be, I think a lot of people seem to be confused about what the judgment is. It's very simple. All right, so anyways, for God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom under the beast. This is talking about uh, the great whore of Babylon, which is the fourth beast of Daniel, which is the Roman Catholic Church. And God has put it into to their hearts, talking about the agents of the Roman Catholic Church and uh, they're all going to be destroyed so we don't have anything to worry about and again in Revelation 18 for she say saith in her heart I sit a queen and I am no widow and shall see no sorrow again uh, talking about the Roman Catholic Church mentioned as a woman because she is a religion she mimics herself as the bride of Christ, and she is not the bride of Christ. She is the whore, the great whore of Babylon. Okay, so anyways, just wanted to show that there is no mention in the book of Revelation about men's hearts failing them for fear. This is from Luke 21. Make no mistake about it. Metric shape. Here again, looking like Tron in the skies. Now, in the book of Revelation, it states that in the end times, men's hearts will fail them for what they see coming yeah so again if we go back to Luke 21 again this when this happens man it's the end of the world there there's no there's no uh, you know sideshow or whatever leading up to the end of the world this is it right this is it when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven this is it it's over it's the end of the world and when people see what's coming and they will just it's full-on panic mode at that point for all those that are not saved now for us that are saved Jesus says when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh all right so we're comforted and because we have the Lord Jesus Christ on our side these men they they're banking on this idea that there is no Jesus they're banking on the idea that Jesus is a lawnmower uh, a lawn you know uh, some Mexican mowing lawns and that sort of thing you know and that Jesus Christ is this phony uh, fictional character and uh, you've heard people say well Zeus is Jesus Je they got Jesus from Zeus and that all that all the sort of things that they say that that reject the Lord Jesus Christ all these people are going to be absolutely shocked stunned terrified and some of them they're going to die right there on the spot because their heart will fail them it will be an absolute derision so anyways uh, I just wanted to point out those three things uh, I think there was something else here if we go toward the end here I'll, I'll finish it on this I'm not sure uh, the context of this title and Enoch was not for God took him so let's go find that verse And right there it is, verse 24, uh, Genesis 5, verse 24, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So, this means Enoch died, okay, for one thing. And it is appointed once unto man to die. And then after that judgment so this would apply to Enoch because Enoch was a man all right this is not everybody but Enoch this includes Enoch so he died he God took him and then of course we read about here I can just do it this way I think right there 
by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. So he didn't experience death. That's all that means. He didn't, you know, when people die, sometimes they die long deaths, sometimes they die quick deaths, but Enoch was spared that moment of death. All right? That's all that means. Okay. Now, uh, what I commonly see is people saying that, well, Enoch had a book, and I had uh, this young lady here in the comments. She just tries to kill me every day with these comments. And in one of them, uh, she mentions uh, something about Enoch. Doesn't matter. Who cares? All right. I don't. She really doesn't make any point regarding Enoch, and who cares anyway? So the all I wanted to show was that um, uh, she's this like this woman here. She'll she rejects the idea that Jesus can save you. You got to save yourself is what she wants to say, and and the way you do that, according to her is that if you sin then all you do is say I repent of my sin and then that covers your sin and then every time you sin you have to say I, I repent of my sin and so Jesus died in vain and right there <laughs> so according to her Jesus died in vain and uh, his death doesn't cover your sin at all you have to say I repent of my sin in order for your sin to be covered, uh, I, it's, I'm, it's 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 insanity. But a lot of people believe that. Repent is faith. No, repent is turning. It's not faith. It's never been faith. And repenting of your sin has never covered anybody's sin. I'm true. I, I'm trying to prove a powerful point, and you're failing big time. And two hundred. Fallen Angels, Book of Enoch, Lost Grace Due to Sins. Right, first of all, angels are spirits. They're not beings. Okay, this is not comic book world. All right, this is not Superman, Boogeyman, Spider-Man, whatever. The reality is there are no extraterrestrials. There are no extra beings there are no Marvin Martians up in the sky all right that's comic book stuff all right when you're a kid you believe that this kid stuff this is all right okay so I don't want anything to do with your fantasy world I really don't but I have to address it because you're throwing it on me all right Enoch could not have written a book uh, not possible I don't care how many people say Enoch has a book he could not possibly have a book alright so we go first of all let's address Jude 1 verse 14 and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints prophesied it's not written if it was written, it would have said written. But then also, if it did say it was written, then that would nullify the entire Bible. It cannot say it was written. If, if it used the word written, you would have to change the first 11 chapters of the Bible. All right, so let's make this simple as possible, okay? Um, in Genesis 11, the whole earth was of one language. Okay, so this is after the flood. Okay, before the flood, the whole earth was of one language. And even after the flood, the whole earth was of one language. And then they started to build a city. And there was nothing that was going to stop them from what they imagined to do. So God confounded the language, and once God confounded the language, that original language was no longer spoken. 
All right. <clears throat> Think about this. Let's say English is the original language. The whole earth spoke English. Now uh, we start to build a city, and God says, "No, not going to let that happen. I'm going to confound the language." Now you're going to speak English and Chinese, and some people will speak English and you know Spanish or whatever. I mean, English and French and English and German. But everybody still speaks the first language, but now they're getting added another language. Well, if I meet, you know, Zing Zhao, I'm going to, he's going to speak to me in English, or in, in a, he's going to speak to me in Chinese. I'm going to be like, what the heck are you talking about, kid? And, hey, how about this? We just speak English. The hell with this new language. We'll just keep speaking the original language much easier we all understand it no that was not the case the original language was done away with forever done away with nobody on earth spoke the original language otherwise there was no there would have been no point to confounding the language this is common sense stuff stuff here this is not rocket science. There was nobody speaking the original language after God confounded the language. Okay. Now, go back. Genesis 5. This was before the flood. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. This is before the flood. So before the flood, the whole world was of one language. Anything that Enoch would have written, he could have written a, uh, written a whole library of books. Nobody would understand one single word of that book after God confounded the language. It's as if it was just a bunch of gobbly gook. God confounded the language. Nobody at that point could understand what was said what was written what was any any of that the language is completely um you know they are completely oblivious to that original language and then of course we go back to jude uh, so they enoch did not write a book did not have any writings at all that could be understood but what he taught was remembered and so this teaching of his about the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints for one it parallels what we read in Matthew 24 verse 31 but also it was just a oral teaching it was just something that was handed down orally from generation to generation it was not something well look at what Enoch writ, wrote down that's not it at all so these people that are claiming that there's a book of Enoch are they're deceived for one but the original people that put it together are deceivers and liars and getting people and there's no doubt in my mind it, it originates from the Catholic Church and they've done this with several books um, and of course, uh, you know, Second Peter, chapter one: For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. All right, so this is not a new thing. And you think about a what is a cunningly devised fable? If if it's not this idea of Enoch and all these fallen angels and uh, giants that are you know 300 miles tall or whatever it is I mean if that's not a cunningly devised fable then nothing is right you guys are just uh, willing to believe anything and everything but the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God and so it's interesting to me you'll spend all this time reading all these false books and you won't read the Bible and why is that well one, this is condemnation that men prefer darkness rather than the light. Or how's that? How's that go? Uh, I think I just butchered that verse. And this is the condemnation 
that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. And then, of course, we can go to, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I'm telling you that Bible is more powerful than any book on earth and especially this phony baloney book of Enoch, okay? All right, so no, I appreciate uh, this Moses fella sharing this video with me. Give me something to do, but that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to look for the mistakes that you're making, all right, and I'm going to expose them. All right, you want to get this stuff right, then get it right. If you care about the truth, get it right.